So guys, one day I am scrolling on a TikTok, which is something I can get lost in. And I see this video. It's of a young kid who's autistic and he's getting his hair done. And the person who's cutting his hair, following him around. And they're running around the shop and it was so beautiful because it was what this young man needed to feel safe, to feel secure. This episode, I get to talk to that young man's mother. We're going to hear about her journey. We're going to hear about what that video did for her. And we're going to talk about activism for autism. Join us. Fear it, Fear it. face it, face it, face it. Face it. Face it. First of all, thank you so much for coming to talk to me today. I would love if you can start just by telling my audience who you are, what you do. Okay, so first of all, thank you for having me. <laughs> um, my name is Dr. LaQuista. I am a licensed therapist, entrepreneur, autism mom, mm -hmm. um, mother, daughter, like all the things. Um, but the most important role I have right now is being an autism mom and advocate. Absolutely. Um, I think it's so important that we are just out in the front when it comes to um, autism and um, being an autism mom because there's so much fear there. You know, <clears throat> I know that um, when I was thinking about having a child at an older age, we're not going to talk about age. <laughs> one of the things that everyone used to scare me was, what if your child's going to be autistic? What if your child's going to be autistic? And I just could not understand that. But for you, what has the journey been like? Ooh, so... It really has been a journey. Yeah. I remember, so I have two children, mm -hmm. two boys. Uh, my oldest is 17, Jordan. And when I got pregnant with Jackson, I was that advanced maternal age. Yeah. I'm like, what, 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 <laughs> what you mean? <laughs> you know, I'm like, okay. Like, mm -hmm. um, at the time I was 36. Mm -hmm. Um, and, I was like, what do you mean advanced maternal age? And it really scared me because yeah. all the things that you're saying, yeah. like what if something is wrong and actually going through my pregnancy from the beginning, they labeled me as high risk. Wow. Um, I had so many complications. Wow. And for me, I'm also a military veteran. Mm -hmm. So for me, for someone who had gone overseas, yeah. um, I deployed to Iraq two times. Wow. You know, they shoot you up with all kind of different shots mm -hmm. to go. All of these things start playing in my mind. Like, oh my gosh, like what if something is wrong with my baby? Yeah. And on top of that, I did it alone. So mm. um, at five months pregnant, my son's father and I, we broke up. And so I'm out in Connecticut by myself, no wow. family, just me and my oldest son, and I'm having these complications. So right. it really has been a journey from the beginning and to the point where <laughs> my mom, so I ended up moving back to Georgia mm -hmm. um, at five months pregnant. And my mom would just <laughs> look at me and she was like, oh my God, I can't wait till you have this baby because you're so miserable. Um, I had hypertension. Yeah. Um, during my pregnancy, after I had Jackson, I actually ended up in the hospital strapped to a bed because my blood pressure was so high, which wow. I, I had no idea that people have preeclampsia yeah. after giving birth, but... I left my two day old baby because oh. my head was hurting so much, went to the hospital thinking, oh, they're just going to give me something. And they admitted me immediately. I almost died. Wow. So it it has been <laughs> quite a journey. And that's just before he's even a month mm, old. Right, right. Yeah. And so let's stay there just for a moment. Um, one of the things that you mentioned is 
um, five months pregnant, your world changed. Mm -hmm. Can you take me back to that moment? What were you feeling? Yeah, so at the time I was living in Connecticut. Mm -hmm. This is like my first um, job in my career. I'm a licensed yeah. clinical social worker. I was working in homeless programs mm -hmm. um, up at the VA at the Veterans Hospital in Newington, Connecticut. Moved there, just took a chance. Yeah. Like my first time leaving Georgia, I moved to Minnesota for a job. Mm -hmm. And then I got the call to come to Connecticut. So I packed my baby up, went to Connecticut, did not know a soul. Yeah. Um, had no one to take care of my oldest son. And so happened, I meet this guy mm -hmm. who, you know, we hit it off really well. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> silly me, not <laughs> even thinking, you know, my oldest son, I'm like, you know, I can't have any more children. Right. Didn't even cross my mind. So <laughs> when I found out I was pregnant, I was so, I was just so distraught. I actually backed into the I backed into my garage and hit like the, it was like a hose in my garage, wow. ruined my car. Like I was just like, oh my gosh, like I'm about to have a baby. Couldn't wrap my head around it. Yeah. And I told the father and the reaction wasn't what I expected. But mm -hmm. after a while, he kind of warmed up to it. Mm -hmm. You know, we had made plans to yeah. move in together to start a life. And then... I remember adding him onto my lease, um, to my condo, my townhouse. And the day we went to, for him to go sign the papers, he's like, I can't do this anymore. Wow. And my world just turned, like you said, turned upside down. And, you know, I just remember being so depressed and yeah. like crying. Um, did not want my oldest son to see and I would lock myself in my closet and mm. cry and at the time I had no money mm -hmm. to like really pick up and move right prayed about it I promise you in a week I got some money from the VA mm -hmm. um, my VA disability claim came through and I was like oh okay this is my sign right. I gotta go back home so I moved back home and, you know, just surrounded myself with my loved ones mm -hmm. to help nurture me through this pregnancy and get me through it. And I went into labor on the day after Thanksgiving of mm -hmm. 2015. Mm -hmm. And I was so upset because I had all these leftovers. I'm like, I'm about to <laughs> eat my food. <laughs> I was so mad about the leftovers oh more goodness. than anything. But... Um, I called my son's father and I was like, I'm in the hospital. Like, yeah. I'm about to go into labor. Bye. And that was it. I wow. wasn't even going to tell him. My mom was like, you can't do that. And so just really trying to soften my heart yeah. and just care for my baby. Like, that was like my number one priority. And my village just stepped in. My my father, um, my brother, like my mm -hmm. uncles. And also my ex-husband, yeah. um, he really like stepped in to be a father figure That's um, at that time. And that was exactly what I needed and what my baby needed. Wow. Um, I love that you speak about your village. Mm -hmm. um, I find that a lot of times when we go through those dark places, we want to keep it to ourselves. Um, how important is it to be transparent about what you're going through so your village can help you? Yeah. And asking for help, that's that's like so hard for me. Yeah. There's so much shame and stigma mm -hmm. and honey, I I was embarrassed. Yeah. Like thirty six year old woman, college educated, at the time I had a master's degree, one course away from my doctorate. Wow. Out here with two babies mm -hmm. <laughs> and just really embarrassed to tell people that okay I'm doing this alone yeah. and going to my church family and just talking about it like normalizing that we're all human mm -hmm. that things happen things yes. that are outside of our control but I do believe that you know things happen for a reason not everything you know things happen sometimes we don't we can't comprehend or understand right. why right. but 
everything that has happened in my life, in my son's life, I believe has brought us to this moment. Mm -hmm. And it's that sharing our story, um, not being ashamed and being unapologetic about it, that really resonates with so many people and has really connected our story to people across the globe. So it's it's really amazing. You just have to be yourself. We're going to talk a little bit later about that, about just what you mean by connecting Mm -hmm. around the globe. Um, So I find it very interesting sometimes when I speak to mental health experts um, and I speak to um, people who are very spiritual. Sometimes there's a gap, like both can exist in the same place. And I'm sure that's something that you've experienced. I'm a real big advocate for therapy. I'm a real big advocate for, um, you know, mental health services and you know, I'm a Jesus freak. So how do you bridge that gap and marry those two so that we all know it's okay to seek help in God and to seek Mm -hmm. professional help? Yeah. And it's so important in Mm -hmm. our community because, you know, (laughs) you know, take it to, take it to God, take it to Jesus. Don't talk about what Mm -hmm. goes on in our household. Um, but I truly believe that God gave people these abilities and these skills to be able to help our people. Yes. You know, as a therapist, you're right. I, I have struggled. I question things. I'm not immune to that, mm-hmm. but I have a solid foundation. I come from a women, a family of women who pray. Um, my late grandmother, my mother's mother, she, practically raised me yeah. and no matter how far I may have strayed uh-huh, uh-huh. <laughs> she's always praying for me and you know my family and just reminding me that you always have a home to come to come back to and you know we just celebrated my great grandmother's 100th birthday wow praise and, god yes amen but you know sometimes she's she gets confused yeah but she she will break out in her prayers <laughs> and she knows every scripture wow. like she taught herself to read wow. the bible and it's just a reminder like you know god places these people like in our lives to remind us that you know this is home, like this is familiar, Um, you're welcome here, and I really do appreciate it. So yes, you can have Jesus, you can have um, therapy, Mm -hmm. you need both. And, you know, bridging that gap for our community to come together and work together, ministers, pastors, and licensed therapists, I think, you know, we're going to have to do that because there is a pandemic outside of this other pandemic and it's a mental health crisis. Yes. Oh my goodness. We could spend hours talking about that. Um, I'm really passionate about that. Um, And I definitely just want our audience to know that it's okay. Mm -hmm. Like reach out for help. It's okay. You said, you know, our mental health experts, our village and our God all can work together, you know? Um, tell me, when was the first time that you realized that autism was going to be a part of your reality? Yeah, so <laughs> back up a little bit. So mm-hmm. my son's father, mm-hmm. that who we had broken up when right. we were pregnant, we actually got back together. Okay. Um, okay. So we got back together. Um, we were both in the military yeah. and... Um, I was on active duty. I was getting ready to get off of active duty. We decided to, you know, work on our family Mm -hmm. and we ended up getting married. And at the time, Jackson was, he wasn't quite two yet, um, but we moved um, to New Jersey because he, I was coming off of active duty. He was coming on to active duty and at the time. I'm a stay-at-home mom at this point. So mm-hmm. I'm like, oh, gosh, I got to care for this kid, like, all day. <laughs> and what I noticed was he wasn't progressing like I thought. Mm-hmm. He, at two, he wasn't speaking. He mm-hmm. didn't have any words. He had maybe one word, and that was milk. Mm-hmm. Um, he 
was very clingy to me. He mm. would play by himself. And I just kind of, I was like, you know what? My child's been through so much. Like right. we're a military family, we move around. But it was me going to a business lunch with um, a potential partner. Mm -hmm. She's a nurse practitioner. And we're sitting there talking about this partnership and she starts talking about her adult sons and this lady that <laughs> I had only known, you know, maybe a month or so, mm -hmm. you know, we had spoken via email. She breaks down crying wow. at the table and I'm like, okay, I don't know what to do. I'm a therapist, but I don't know this mm -hmm. lady like this. I don't want to <laughs> intrude, but I'm like, what's wrong? And she's telling me about her son and how she missed all these signs of him being autistic. Wow. And I'm like, well, what did you miss? And her, and mind you, her son is like 18 at the time. Right. And she's like, he blames me because, you know, I was too old when I had him because she was an older woman. Mm -hmm. um, and she starts naming all of these things. And I'm in my mind, I'm like checking off like, wait. My son doesn't do wow. this. My son isn't hitting this milestone. And immediately leaving that lunch, I called my son's pediatrician. Mm -hmm. I was like, we need an appointment. Mm -hmm. Like, I I have some concerns. And we took him in to get evaluated. I didn't know the process. So right. I took him to the pediatrician because that's what you do. And she was like, okay, we... Yes, I think he could possibly be, but you have to get an evaluation mm. and the wait is six months. I was mm. like, six months? What was that like? I was like, I need help. I'm right coming now. to you and you're telling me I have to wait six months. Like, we got good insurance. Mm. We're, we're like military. <laughs> what, can we move to the front of the line? And she was like, unfortunately, we don't have enough, um, what do they call them? Like... Um, they're like, um, they're specialists, they're right. pediatricians, but they specialize in doing these evaluations in my mind. Just went blank, can't even think of their names, mm. but um, she's like, there's not enough. And wow. there's so many um, kids who wow. are on this list. And so at this point, I'm like freaking out. And she's like, but, you know, here in New Jersey, I'm going to send you this information on early intervention. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Get your son enrolled. Like, this is going to help while you wait. And so we got him set up for early intervention, uh -huh. which was heaven sent Yeah. Um, while we waited. But we were calling the Children's Hospital of Philadelphia, like, every day. Do you have an opening? Did mm -hmm. someone cancel? The, like, because six months in our mind was like, we don't have any time to waste. And we waited a few months. We didn't wait the whole six. We were able to kind of slide in and get mm -hmm. him evaluated. Um, but, at, you know, he was still going through early intervention. We took him in for the evaluation. And this is just before he turned three. And they, was, they called us back in to get the results. And they told us that um, he does have autism spectrum disorder. Mm -hmm. um, I immediately started to tear up. Yeah. I'm like, and it's not that I was ashamed, but I'm like, I know life is going to be harder for my right. son right. because of all of the stigma, because of everything that's attached with that. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I'm a therapist, so I have I have clients who come to me and what's my diagnosis? Like they get so caught up in the diagnosis and the label that they don't even do the work sometimes mm -hmm. because it's like they start to embody like all of these things, right. all of these symptoms and signs that, you know, are attached to the yeah, label. that yeah. are attached to them. And it really is a roadblock for them. And so I didn't really want that for my son, yeah. but I knew, okay, we just got to dig in and we, we have to really, you know, equip ourselves with like the knowledge, like the doc, whatever he needs, we have to be there. And um, how did your that. husband respond? Um, he was just kind of like shocked. He, yeah. It was like a deer in the headlights. He's like, oh my gosh. And he, he's very, I'm more the outspoken yeah. person, even though I'm an introvert, mm -hmm. but 
I'm like, when it comes to my children, I'm like, right. <laughs> I'll go there. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, but he's like, you know, it's going to be okay. He's trying to reassure me, um, which I can definitely appreciate. Yeah. Um, and I'm thankful that at the time we lived on a military base. Mm -hmm. And so we had all of the services there. And Jackson was getting speech and OT. Mm -hmm. They were like, all of these therapists were coming in and out of our home every wow. day. And at the time I had started my business and, mm -hmm. you know, trying, trying to work a part-time job just for my own sanity and start my business. So I really worked around his schedule. Mm -hmm. Um, but he was able to start pre-K on his third birthday. And I think that was the moment where mm. things started, everything started to click because okay. he started to interact with other children yeah. and kind of know how to socialize. Cause that was like the biggest thing. He's always been super smart at one, one and a half. He will sit and put together like a whole puzzle. Mm -hmm. Like it like amazed me. I would just record it. Like some of the things he would do, like he's not talking, but right, he's but doing like these complicated tasks. And yeah. I'm looking at my child like, where do you get that from? I know I'm smart, <laughs> but I don't, know, that I don't know where from? that came from. <laughs> but yeah, it, it has been a journey full of setbacks. I, you know, I don't, um, I don't make it all to be like roses right. and like a walk in the park because it hasn't. Um, and I want to, if, if we can pause there for a second, I want to talk about maybe some of those setbacks mm -hmm. or even one of those really challenging things. Um, I just think it's important that someone who may be going through something similar, they know, like, no, this is hard. And I felt like giving up. So I would love for you to share a story with me. Um, and then I have a follow-up question after that. Okay. Yeah, um, gosh, there's so many, but I will say at the time, mm -hmm. you know, married to Jackson's dad, and yeah. it was really hard on our marriage. Like, yeah. we had all of this, baggage from before right we were newly married in a new state military family no family no friends yeah. and it was him <laughs> and me and we both had you know children who were teenagers at the time and that was it that was that was our support so our lives revolved around Jackson, mm -hmm. his therapist appointments, like all of these things. And his behavior was, oh my gosh, it was, it was so much sometimes that right. I would like cry at night mm -hmm. because I was so overwhelmed. And, you know, my ex husband he's my ex-husband now, um, he would work all day and then he would come home and we would just like tag team. So we, we didn't have time for one another and so I, I definitely think that played a part like mm -hmm. in our relationship um but one of the hardest things in parents um this is hard for a lot of parents because i get a lot of questions um potty training yeah, yeah. um so he's in pre-k and i'm like you know again worried about what society thinks you know i don't want my baby going to school he's wearing yeah. pull-ups he's going to get picked on like all of these things and he just wasn't getting it and it made me feel like a failure mm -hmm. like as a mom mm -hmm. you know it was everything I tried to put him in swimming lessons I'm trying to be like a good mom what society says right. a good mom is and I didn't know at the time that you know he had sensory mm -hmm. um, processing disorder mm -hmm. um, and that was an issue for him mm -hmm. and I would get upset um, because he would get frustrated. Well, I would say frustrated, but I think it was just he he was overstimulated. Yeah. And I would get frustrated. And, you know, I feel so much guilt and shame yeah. about that. And I know parents, they feel that way. Yeah. Um, because you really don't know what to do, what to say, who to go, who to go to. And your family, as much as they love you, 
they can't relate. Right. Um, they say things that they feel is helpful. Oh, don't worry mm -hmm. about it. There's, you know, there's mm -hmm. nothing wrong with that mm -hmm. baby or whatever. Mm -hmm. But, you know, especially in our community. Right. And I know they're trying to be helpful, but it doesn't help because you right. can't ignore what you see Absolutely. happening. <laughs> and, you know, it it was just really hard. Everything was really hard. Mm -hmm. I was trying to finish like my last class, get my doctorate. Mm -hmm. And I remember this one day, I just had a panic attack, mm -hmm. like full on. It was Jackson had a rough day. So he's having like a meltdown. Um, I had a difficult day um, with like clients. Mm -hmm. um, I'm working my practice part time. I have this dissertation I'm working on and it was just one, it was something unrelated. I think I saw like some hair in mm -hmm. the sink mm -hmm. and I literally broke down like full on panic attack. Yeah. Like, and my ex-husband at the time, he was like, what, what's wrong with you? <laughs> He's looking at me. Mm -hmm. He's like, just calm down. I got it. I, I got you out. You know, you just focus on, getting through like this last month of school and I'm going to focus on Jackson, which I appreciate. Um, and I know a lot of people don't have that because right. it's really, really, really isolating. Um, but it's just a lonely road. It's a mm. lot. It's a lot to carry mm -hmm. and to kind of deal with. I think that's one of the things that is so um, just profound about you sharing your story is that it is a lonely road mm -hmm. and there is some shame connected to it. And so some people don't talk about it um, from a very personal perspective. Of course, you know, there's advocates and, you know, you learn about autism. But I mean, speaking about it from a personal, this is my journey mm -hmm. so that someone who's watching or listening they don't feel so alone. So I really commend you for that. Mm -hmm. um, I wanted to touch on that mommy guilt because I think moms deal with mommy guilt all the time, no matter what. But for you, <clears throat> thinking about just all the things, you, like you mentioned it, like, you know, getting pregnant um, after 35 and having to move so much because of the military and all of these things what allowed you to let go of that mommy guilt and understand that this wasn't a punishment or something that you did wrong? Yeah. Honestly, I think sometimes I still struggle with it. Yeah, you know, I'm not real. perfect. Um, but it was, I think people, society had pushed me to the point where it's like, you can't please everyone. Mm -hmm. And this is our life. Like right. it, it's not fake. It's not, um, it's not sugar coated. It's yeah. like raw. And what I tell other autism moms is whether you like it or not, you're going to be an advocate. Like, <laughs> um, I love that you have to be for your children. And I think we take for granted that everybody has like our child's best interest mm -hmm. at heart, especially when it comes to schools. Mm. And for me, I did that for so long. Like, I'm like, you know, he was fortunate. He had great teachers, great therapists right. up until we got to kindergarten and um, he got suspended from kindergarten. And I'm like, wait, what, how did, how did I not recognize this? Like, how did we get here? And at that point I was like, you know what? I, I have to, I have to talk about this because yes. I cannot be the only person. And I felt so helpless, like mm. in the moment, like how do I let my uh, the five year old son get first suspended from kindergarten mm -hmm. and then kicked out? Like mm. he was kicked out of his school. Wow. And I'm like, I'm a whole doctor, like mm -hmm. I'm a whole therapist. Mm -hmm. Like these people just played me. Like mm -hmm. this is what I'm going through in my mind. And again, my village stepped in. I love that. I shared it on Facebook. I remember recording something. I probably deleted it because uh, I probably looked a hot mess. <laughs> um, but I was just so mad. Like my baby just got suspended and 
the people who reached out to me commented in my inbox saying, hey, reach out to me, sis. Like, mm. hey, like, I'm an advocate in this. Like, do you know your rights? Do you know what you need to do? This happened to my friend, but I kept hearing it. This happened to so-and-so. This right. happened to this person. I'm like, wait, what? For real? And wow. a lot of it was, like, in the same county. And so from that moment, I was like, you know what? I'm just going to talk about it. Like, mm -hmm. you know, no sense in holding all of this to myself because other people need to hear this because if my story can help another mom not be complacent, not right. go through this, like I have to tell it. And I think that's a great place to talk about social media and mm -hmm. the impact that you sharing your story has had. Um, I want to talk about um, one particular video that went viral and your, it's your son getting a haircut. Can you tell me about that moment? Oh, the video. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So um, a lot of people with autism, mm -hmm. like noises, like right. any sensory type stuff can be very overwhelming. Mm -hmm. And so Jackson has always struggled with haircuts and um, so we actually went about two years without him getting a haircut yeah. because it was so much. And once we, my ex-husband and I got divorced, like no one, I could get no one to cut his hair because mm. we would have to do it at home mm -hmm. and my ex-husband would have to like hold him down and he would cry and mm. I would sit there like, oh my gosh, no, my baby. But, mm. you know, I wanted him to get a haircut because right. I felt like, you know, as a little black boy, he needed to look a certain way right. to be accepted by society. And it got to a point where I was like, you know what, I'm I'm not doing this anymore because it was so traumatic for him yeah. and also me. And so we actually started by, I was looking for a barber for my oldest son mm -hmm. when we moved back to Georgia. So at this point, we're back to Georgia. I know we don't been through about, I don't know how many states. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. But we're, I'm looking for a a barber and my sister's friend gave me the name of her barber and I was like hey can you cut my oldest son's Jordan's hair and this was Re on the barber in the video yeah. she was like yes I said hey by the way I have a younger son mm -hmm. um, he has autism um, I don't know if I'm ready but are you good with kids she was like oh that don't bother me. I was like, now we've been kicked out of, you know, <laughs> some fine establishments right. before. She was like, I got you. And she was like, just bring him in and, you know, let us see. That didn't work. Like mm -hmm. he would see the barber shop and yeah. immediately go into fight or flight. Yeah. And so it was always a struggle. So mm -hmm. I was like, we ain't doing this no more. Mm -hmm. Um, but I continue to take him with my oldest son. Mm -hmm. So it would be, so Jordan would go in and get his hair cut and we would wait in the car and mm -hmm. Jackson's like, wait, where are we going? I'm like, we're going to get ice cream. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and he's like, this ain't the way to ice cream. Mm -hmm. This look like we're going to, we're going to the barbershop. And I'm like, don't worry, you're not getting a haircut. It's Jordan's turn. Right. And so, um, Jordan would get his haircut, we would sit in the car. Eventually, I was like, let's just go inside or whatever. See, he, he wanted no parts of it. Mm -hmm. So I was like, you know what? I'm not even going to force it. Um, but as he got a little bit older, so at this, he's like five, going on six, and he wants to look like Jordan. He's like, I want my hair like Jordan. Aw, like his and big I'm, brother. Right. And I'm like, wait, I said, you want to go to the barbershop? And he was like, um, I think so. I said, well, wait, wait, Jackson. I said, last time we went, <laughs> it was a whole thing. Yeah. I said, do you want mommy to cut, cut your hair? And he was like, he's thinking. Uh -huh. I don't know how to cut hair, <laughs> but he's thinking. <laughs> and I was like, well, let me try it first. Right. Because I don't want it to be too much for him. So yeah. I researched clippers and I'm like, I'm going to try it. 
Ooh, it look a mess. <laughs> um, <laughs> I sent Rhea a message. I was like, I tried to cut my baby hair. He said he want to go right. and come in. I want him to, but I don't want it to be too much. And she's like, bring him. At this time, she had moved to her own private mm -hmm. um, barber shop. So it's not like yeah. the typical barber yeah. shop. It's like one client at a time. So I was like, I don't know. So we had an appointment for him and he went in and he got his hair cut. You know, he was, I had all the things. I had headphones, I had mm -hmm. snacks, mm -hmm. I had iPad. Mm -hmm. I was like ready. He let her cut it. It was it was a little challenging, but yeah. he let her. And I was like, okay, so we, we might can do this. I knew every time we would have to go, we have to have all of the things. Right. Um, <laughs> He started, you know, again, wanted to be more like Jordan. Mm -hmm. He went into the barbershop one day and he gave Bree like a high five. Like he was just very interactive with her. I was like, oh, he really like her. Like he's really comfortable. And so when he started going, well, this particular day, the day of the video, I, I know I, I can go on and on. That's okay. This, this, I'm, particular, I'm <laughs> this particular day, um, we were running late for mm. the barbershop. So I forgot like his headphones. Mm. <laughs> we didn't have time to eat breakfast. So it's oh, like, oh goodness. my gosh, here we go. We get in there and he's not having it. He's yeah. like, I don't know what you're doing, but we're not about to do this <laughs> like, today. This isn't working. This, this isn't working. <laughs> and I'm getting frustrated because I'm, I got things to do. Right. And she was like, I got it. I got it. And I was like, no, you don't. This, this is what I'm thinking. She yeah. was like, I got it. And so I sit on the couch and I was like, she not about to cut his hair because he refused to sit in the chair uh -huh, this day. He uh -huh. didn't want the cape. He didn't want anything. He was just like in a mood. And I'm sitting on the couch and I see her like running around the shop with him and she starts cutting his hair. And I'm like, wait, she really cutting his hair. Wow. And something told me, just pull out your phone and record it. Yeah. I mean, I usually record it because it's a big deal. Yeah. Um, so I'll send it to my family and they yeah. were like, oh my gosh, Jackson, you did such a great job. Um, but yeah, she's playing this whole game with him. Mm. I started to get emotional and I'm like, I was like, oh my gosh, you did it. Mm. And I don't know how it all came together, but mm. I told her, I was like, I'm going to see this video. I'm going to post it and I'm going to send yeah. it to you. Yeah. Kind of forgot about it, but I was sitting at home. This is on a Friday. I'm sitting at home. The news comes on. Boris Kojo is talking about this new movie about, um, it, it stars an autistic um, teen. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I'm like, okay, I'm going to post my video. Then I'm like, yeah, I erase it. I put it on TikTok. Uh -huh. And then I was like, oh, no, I'm not about to let these people judge oh, cause TikTok. Because that fear Ooh. of what people say, but you push through it. Yes, TikTok, can, you know, they could, I love my TikTok community, but <laughs> you fall on the wrong side of TikTok, it's brutal. Right. But when I saw the interview, I was just like, I'm just going to do it. So I posted it, forgot about it. This is like that morning. By that evening, the video, I kept getting these notifications and I was looking, I was like, why? Right here it says I have like 300 views. Mind you, I have like 100 followers mm -hmm. at the time. I was like, and my, my videos only usually get like 30 views. I'm right. like, this says 300, but this says like 3,000. Mm -hmm. I was like, which is which? And I'm like asking people. Nobody could tell me. I looked and then it was like 500,000. I was like, wait, what? Like, <laughs> there's no way this video is at 500 something thousand. Right. Like, in less than a day. And it just started going crazy. Yeah. People like calling me. Yeah. Did yeah. you see Steve Harvey shared your video? Yeah. Holly Robinson Pete shared your video. And I was yeah. like, what? It was like so overwhelming yeah. that, you know, I remember crying. And Jackson was so excited because he, he he's like a he's like the Aww. typical. <laughs> he has his phone and like I 
I do my social media thing. Mm-hmm. So he's like, Mom, can I use your um can I use your thingy? I was like, What thingy? The thing to hold the camera and he'll <laughs> sit and he'll record like himself, like doing like YouTube. That is beautiful. And so he was excited. He was like, Wait, I got all these likes and Aww. hearts. And I'm like, Yeah, baby. And so he like told his dad and his dad lives in Texas mm-hmm. and he was like oh, people from work were like, your son is like TikTok famous. I was like, wait, people know, like, this is crazy. And so, yeah, it just went from there. And it's like at 28 million. Yeah, it's it's amazing. And just the power of social media. You know, we speak a lot about the negative side, but there's such a Mm -hmm. powerful side. Um, So I have... About two more questions for okay. you. The first is, how did you, how were you able to take that platform, that exposure, and turn it into advocacy? Right. Well, it was really, um, I didn't even know the impact until mm-hmm. I checked my messages. Mm-hmm. Um, so the people on TikTok found me on Instagram, uh-huh. and my inbox was filled with, moms, dads, aunts, grandparents, yeah. like, thank you for sharing, wow. um, crying out to me, like, I'm having this issue, mm. your son speaks so well, like, mm. oh my gosh, what do you do? Asking for advice and just asking for help. And yeah. I'm like, at first it was overwhelming. I had to take a moment and pause, yeah. but I was like, this is a need and Somehow, you know, I don't know everything, but I know there's so much people get just from hearing my story. But I do know, a, I don't know everything, but I know a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, I have to be confident in like my qualifications. Right, right. Um, and if I have this audience who is asking something for me, it's my responsibility to give and serve that back to them. Yeah. And so it really has been a place for me to connect with other autism moms to mm-hmm. kind of help them um, and other autism mom advocates like I mm-hmm. met like some amazing women mm-hmm. who have been been sharing their yeah. stories and it's just amazing. Wow I absolutely love hearing that um, because sometimes the responsibility is not just to ourselves it's mm-hmm. to others. Um, my last question for you is where did you pull from to have the faith to get through all of these moments, all of these ups and downs? Yeah. My grandmother, um, mm. we call her Mom Minnie, and green mm. is her favorite color. Oh, That's why I work with green. Oh, yes. Um, she, um, you know, she's always been, like, my biggest, like, cheerleader yeah. and supporter. Um, we lost her to COVID, but mm. she just absolutely loved Jackson yeah. and just thought he hung the moon and the stars <laughs> and like, he's so smart. And she would always tell me like, share your story. Wow. Um, she was a writer. Um, she never published anything, but she always believed in sharing your story. Wow. And she always prayed for me. Wow. Like, no matter where I was at, I'm praying for you, baby. I'm, mm-hmm. You know, I'm so proud of you. And so she just really, like, losing her, like, really changed me to stop waiting and just do. Mm. I think that's so key. A lot of times we wait, we think, we wait, we think, we live in fear, but to just do it. One of the things I ask all of my guests to do is, Repeat this mantra that I say to myself, okay. and it's fear it, face it, faith it. And my thought process is it's okay to fear it, whatever it is, but you got to face it and then faith it through. And your story really highlights doing that. So I would love in your own voice, if your own way, if you could share with our audience what they need to do. Yes. So fear it, face it, and faith it. So tell me, what, what what are your social media numbers like now? <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy. So I went from like 100 followers on TikTok to uh-huh. I think I have 93,000. Beautiful. Um, 
I really should be further, but I, I have to be consistent. Yeah. And then on Instagram, I think at the time I had like 3,000 and I have a little over 10,000. Yeah. But I am most proud of my text community of yes. um, autism moms. So they have that personal um, connection oh, to me that. to be able to ask their questions. And, and I think that is really the purpose, mm -hmm. right, um, to find your tribe oh, in yeah. the people who you can impact and can impact you. Your story is absolutely amazing. I mean, from your personal journey to just being an amazing mother serving our country, oh, thank, thank you. you. Um, and like I said, I have a love for, um, you know, mental health experts and what we need to do for our community. You know, God and therapy really do go together. Um, so I thank you so much for spending this time with me and talking about faith. I cannot wait to meet Jackson. I mean, he is just a doll baby. And I fell in love with that video for so many reasons. Um, and I thank you. Um, thank you. I'm sure you hear it, um, but thank you for being brave. Thank you for being brave. Thank you for sharing your story and you are changing lives. Thank you. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. All right, guys. This is Faith It. Um, I, I'm holding back tears um, as a mom. I'm holding back tears and I truly mean it. Thank you. I'm proud of you for doing that. Um, thank you for joining us, guys. We'll see you on the next episode of It's by no mistake. You, you that was such an inspiring story. My biggest takeaway was centered around mommy guilt. Those of us who are moms, we carry mommy guilt all the time. And it's really important to give ourselves space, give ourselves grace, and know that we don't have to carry that guilt. We don't have to be perfect. Thank you so much for tuning into this episode of Faith It. I am your host, Onyx Keisha, and it is always a pleasure inviting you into my world. It's by no mistake, you, you tuned into Elevate, whether you could have thought you came, you, look yourself right in the face, Ooh. and if you fear it, then face it, and faith it, Ooh. said if you fear it, then face it, and faith it. Faith it, fear it, face it, face it, face it.